During European colonialism, which lasted from the 15th to the mid-20th century, European nations like Britain, France, Spain, and Portugal built big empires overseas. They aimed to control various regions globally, leading to major changes in culture, economy, and politics. This often meant exploiting local people and resources, making them adopt European languages, laws, and customs, and reshaping how trade worked on a global scale. The effects of this period are still felt today, some resulting in stable situations and development and some encountering endless conflicts until now. And people have different opinions about its lasting impact on countries and regions around the world. Although all of these colonial powers are equally bad as they practiced exploitation upon local people, we will be focusing mainly on the facts of why Britain colonizers are better than French based on facts and examples. British colonial policies demonstrated a degree of respect for traditional institutions and a willingness to work alongside existing local leaders. This approach, known as indirect rule, aimed to maintain a level of continuity in some societies, preserving traditional structures and systems of governance. The British recognized that cooperation with indigenous leaders could facilitate the administration of vast and diverse territories. Southeast Asian example of the British controlled territories of Malaya which later became Malaysia, and North Borneo, the colonial administration engaged with local Malay rulers and the traditional system of Malay sultanates. The British recognized the authority of these sultans and collaborated with them in administering the territories. The British influence in Malaya did not seek to undermine the Malay monarchy or the traditional aristocratic system. Instead, they relied on the sultans to maintain local order and oversee aspects of governance. This collaboration helped preserve Malay traditions, including the monarchy, and facilitated a smoother transition to self-governance when Malaysia gained independence in 1957. The policy of indirect rule had great implications for post-colonial governance. When these countries gained independence, they often had a more solid foundation of existing leadership structures and institutions, contributed to a smoother transition to self-governance. On the other hand, the French colonial approach was notably interventionist, and it often resulted in the disruption or weakening of traditional institutions. The French were less inclined to work with existing indigenous leadership and more likely to appoint their own administrators and chiefs. This approach had a great impact on various colonies. As for French colonial policy in Algeria, the French sought to assimilate Algeria into France and imposed French law, and culture. They abolished traditional Algerian legal systems and attempted to dismantle local tribal structures. The resistance to French policies in Algeria eventually led to a protracted and brutal war of independence. The French interventionist approach in their colonies sought to impose French culture, language, and administrative systems. This often disrupted traditional institutions, leaving a lasting impact on post-independence governance and politics. While aiming for a more centralized political system, these policies generated tensions and challenges during the transition to self-governance in many nations and beyond. British and French colonial education had a big impact on their colonies around the world, and it's interesting to see how they did things differently. The British approach involved spreading Western education and working with Christian missionaries. They set up schools and colleges, and while it gave more people access to education, and produced local and westernized intellectuals to govern their own country. One example of British colonial involvement in education is the establishment of Harvard University in the American colonies. British colonizers settled in America in 1607 and founded Harvard University in 1636 in what is now Massachusetts, part of the original 13 American colonies. While not directly established by the British Empire, Harvard's early history is intertwined with colonial efforts to provide education. On the other hand, the French approach was all about assimilation. They wanted to make the colonial subjects more French, so they controlled education more directly and even suppressed local languages and cultures. They used to send the brightest students from local schools to study in France. The idea was to educate them there and then bring them back to their home countries to lead and govern. This meant that not as many people got access to education and they were more on turning colonial subjects into French citizens. Both approaches left their marks on post-colonial regions. The British and French took notably different approaches to political associations in their colonies. The British adopted a more permissive stance, allowing and sometimes even supporting the formation of political associations. This approach provided a platform for local leaders to advocate for self-rule as seen in examples like India's National Congress, Ghana's United Gold Coast Convention, 
and Nigeria's Northern People's Congress. Conversely, the French favored a centralized political structure and often opposed or suppressed political party formation. This more restrictive approach hindered political development, leading to complex and protracted struggles, as exemplified in Algeria. These divergent colonial legacies continue to shape the political dynamics of these regions today. However, speaking of common reality, both left terrible impacts on certain nations after independence, commonly due to their methods of divide and conquer. This tactic was a common strategy used by colonial powers to maintain control over their colonies. This approach involved creating divisions among the local population, often based on ethnicity, religion, or culture, to weaken any united resistance to colonial rule. By fostering internal conflicts and rivalries, colonial powers could effectively govern and exploit the colonized territories. Although British adopt indirect governance system giving power to local people, they would favor a group of people, or a minority, and suppress the others, giving unequal benefits to population, creating an internal tension that finally explode after gaining independence. The British had its fame for adopting an indirect governance system giving local people in power but not to forget is that when they used an indirect rule system, which meant they let local leaders have power, but they often played favoritism with certain groups or minorities, leaving others at a disadvantage. This could lead to suppression by the minority upon its own population. This unfair treatment caused tensions within the population and finally exploded after gaining independence. France went with a highly centralized system, which didn't give much power to local authorities. When they eventually granted independence and left, it often left these nations without a strong leader, creating a power vacuum. This situation is like leaving a country headless, and it could lead to power struggles and potentially long-lasting conflicts between different groups. Belgian colonial influence worsened tensions between Hoodoo and Tutsi in Rwanda, contributing to the 1994 genocide. The common divide-and-conquer method of colonial powers have resulted in many conflicts, ethnic tensions and border disputes such as the China-India-Bhutan border dispute, the Kashmir dispute, Israel-Palestine conflict, and notably the division of Kurdish lands among different countries. Although Kurds possess a huge population, the unfair division has resulted in them to divide and live in, in Iraq. Turkey, Syria, and Iran, creating tensions and conflicts as Kurdish communities have long aspired for greater autonomy and recognition of their cultural and political rights within these diverse countries and they are greatly oppressed by these countries, too. The consequences of colonialism continue to shape the world in various ways, from economic disparities to geopolitical conflicts and cultural exchange.